What's up guys, it's Dwayne back again for another video, back again for the reaction and today is an amazing, wonderful, beautiful, incredible day because it's a Norway day. How Norway got rich and stayed rich. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction, let's go. Norway, it's a small, cold, desolate, but very nice looking country. Everyone's beautiful. heard of Norway and many people want their countries to be more like Norway. Why is that? I it's can because see that. Norway is one of the world's richest countries, second richest per capita if you exclude micronations, and consistently ranks high on multiple metrics measuring human happiness. It's the second richest per capita excluding the micronations. Wow. You see, you're a very wealthy nation. Very happy nation too. Uh, I mean, a lot of Nordic countries are happy, but yeah, super, super wealthy. Let's keep on watching. It's the 6th happiest nation, 7th by life satisfaction, and 1st in the Human Development Index. The wow. Norwegians seem to be living some of the best lives worldwide. Why is Norway so rich and happy? Go My Norway. thinking is that it has to do with location, location, location. Location, location, location. I know he's going to explain what that means, but location. But you're very, it's very cold in Norway. Is that a good location? It can't be through agriculture or anything like that. Maybe fishing, you got a lot of water, maybe oil, maybe, yeah, I don't know. Let's see what he says. Norway's unique location on Earth has allowed it to flourish in a way no other could. Three. Wait, is that Norway as well? Is that Norway as well, guys? Let me know in the comment section below. Is that part of Norway? That's really, that's in the Arctic, well into the Arctic Circle. I mean, most of Norway is, but that's like way, way, way up. And what are these little islands as well? Mm. Three locations means three points, and I will tell you three reasons why Norway's geography has made it rich and kept it happy. Okay. Number one, Norway's geography has kept its population tiny. Norway sits at the edge of Europe on the top of the Scandinavian peninsula. Its terrain has made some great destinations, but when trying to survive, it's not the greatest. A topographical map of Norway and Scandinavia in general shows this problem. Norway is very, very wow. mountainous. mountainous. With the Scandinavian mountains running through almost the entire country, marking the border between Norway and Sweden, and the fjords running along Norway's spur, I mean tadpole shaped country, also made it hard to get to the water without plummeting a thousand meters. The wow, so that tells me that the inhabited land where it's inhabitable must be not that much compared to like because there's so much so many mountains the majority of the land is the inhabitable land is probably quite small like you only got a small amount of like flat land like this that's incredible though, in a valley the mountains and lack of easy trading along the coast has made norway a very hard nation to develop and for the most part has made norway a low populated poor country there's some hope in the south, though, where Flatland made it able to develop ports and its largest city, Oslo, where Oslo. most people lived and still live today. But the rest of the population was still sparsely spread, mostly throughout coastal towns that could actually be accessed. Right. Fortunately, the mountains and fjords also made Norway extremely hard to conquer from neighboring Sweden. They did succeed a couple of times, but for the most part, Norway was safe. Its climate mm. also didn't bring bountiful amounts of people. Norway is mostly tundra and subarctic terrain with an oceanic climate on its coast. Subarctic equals cold and cold equals dying crops. You yep, simply can't farm said. in cold areas, limiting the population Norway could reach. This has given Norway a rather small population today of about 5 million inhabitants. 5 million. That's, that's smaller than the population of London, I think. If, I, if I'm correct, I don't know. You might have to Google it. Um, I think the population of London is 7 million. So five million is really, really a real, a real small amount. But like you said, you guys probably live on the outer skirts by the coast, in the south, just places where agriculture was allowed to thrive. It's quite a hostile environment. Probably in the north, it's probably freezing. Um, so yeah, it makes sense that your population would be so, so low. Habitants. And when you have plenty of money and little people, it is very easy for everybody to get rich. However, Norway's population is steadily growing every year, having a stable population pyramid. This means that in 20 years, Norway will have 6.2 million people, and by wow. 2100, they should have around 7.9 million people. 
which I mean is still much less About below being considered a large population. Don't get me wrong, for most of Norwegian history, the population limiting geography has been awful for the growth of the nation, being limited to a weak third world nation. But now that Norway has developed into one of the richest countries on earth, its small but steadily growing <clears throat> population is great for keeping it wealthy. Number mm. two, Norway's neighbors. Although for most of history, the Scandinavian nations have been beefing and fighting with each other, for the last 50 to 100 years, they've been some of the most bitch ass peaceful nations on earth. That's lovely. Isn't that a cute diagram? Norway and Sweden with a love heart over their heads. And so you should be your neighbours. Like, who's got your back more than your, your neighbour? You know what I mean? You might hate, you might dislike things about each other, but at the end of the day, you share a landmass and you should really be friends. Just like England and Scotland. Like, Scotland's been trying to separate from England and separate the United Kingdom forever. They do, you know, they can't stand the fact that London is where all the resources start and then it trickles out to the rest of the land to Scotland after second so they want to separate and it's understandable but we still love each other do you know what I mean like we've got the Scots back the Scots have our back as well I think let's look at the most modern part. history even though the Viking Age brought Norway to power, pillaging for fun, Norse values were soon replaced by Christian values and pillaging was no longer cool. The 1300s brought a golden age to Norway, having its peak territory, a period of peace, and intense trade with the outside world. Wow, look. So the, the, it's called it Outer Hebedry, Hebedry, I'm saying it wrong, but yeah. And that's Iceland, isn't it? Interesting. World, until the Black Death hit and ruined it. There was a union with Sweden and Denmark, blah blah blah, famine, blah blah blah, union with Sweden again, vote for independence that passed, and we get to World War I, the start of Norway's modern history. Norway wow. was neutral throughout World War I, but heavily favored the Allies. They were hit by the Great Depression like the rest of Europe was, and suffered a broken economy. Norway was also neutral in World War II, but invaded by Germany for their natural resources. They quickly surrendered, but there was a decently sized resistance force, at least for their size. World War II's end brought peace to Europe and a time of rebuilding when half the continent was destroyed. Yeah. The United States, under the Marshall Plan, who was experiencing an economic boom, would give most of Europe the funds they needed to rebuild themselves. This included Norway. What Europe realized from fighting the biggest war in human history was that war was not a fun thing to do, and they would try anything to stop another one. Yeah. This included the formation of NATO, a military alliance between most of Europe headed by the US. Norway joined NATO and the European Union, right? That's why that was formed, I think. In 1949, as well as the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. World War II's tragedy also led to the creation of the European Union, and even yeah. though Norway never joined the EU, they have made the European Free Trade Agreement with other non-EU nations. The EU has undoubtedly integrated Europe together and made a continent-wide war much, much more unlikely than it has ever been. I mean, we're no longer part of the EU, however, we were at the inception of the EU, and also, we work very closely with the EU, and I doubt the UK is going to get into the, any war with Europe. So I'm sure, I think the whole of Europe is fine. NATO sense. has only strengthened that reality. And even if a continental war were to happen, Norway is so out of the way that it could likely just not get involved. Its neighbors Sweden and Finland are members of the EU and not of NATO. So technically the neighbors aren't in any union with each other. Ooh, this is a bit old, isn't it? Because Finland now is part of NATO. I think, and uh, Sweden might be joining. Is Norway part of NATO now? Uh, yeah, let me know. Is Norway part of NATO? I'm not sure about uh, Norway, but yeah, this is a bit. This must be old, uh, a few years old at least. Each other, but the unions are so integrated that war is highly unlikely between the Scandinavian states. World War II brought a pacifist culture to Europe, especially Scandinavia, mm. which has given Norway one of the most stable locations on Earth. And number three, one of the biggest events in its modern history, Norway's natural resource supply was changed forever when they found oil! In 1969, a massive oil field was found inside oil. of Norway's oh. exclusive economic <laughs> I was like, What's zone talking in the about? middle of the North Sea. This was known as the Greater Ecofisk Area. Subsequently, Wait. a state... Hold up, hold up, hold up. What? 
North Sea. This was known as the Greater Ecofisk Area. Um. So this area here. It's very close to the UK, isn't it? It's like in between the UK and Norway. What made this Norway's oil? How come, did the UK get some of that oil? What happened? Surely, it, some of it must belong to, to Scotland, right? Area. Subsequently, a state-owned oil company was set up called Stat Oil, but later merged with Norsk Hydro to make Equinor. The state owns two-thirds of the share of Equinor, but even though they own it, its name shows its true purpose. Equi in Equinor means equal, and Nor means Norway in equal Norway, which is what the revenues of this company hope to obtain. Because there is a large capital investment into making this company, it did not actually turn a profit until the 1980s. But since okay. then, there has been a massive increase in GDP and GDP per capita. Today, at 366 billion US dollars and 68,000 US dollars per person, respectively. Whenever most nations find oil, it usually turns into a civil war unrest or some type of political <laughs> yeah. turmoil to divide the newly found natural resources among the nation. Yet since it was a state-owned company who controlled the resource extraction, the Norwegian government was able to save the revenues it earned and transform it into one of the most extensive welfare programs on earth for their small population. Norway's because mm, the population's small and then you've got a fuck ton of oil, you're able to really like support your your nation in that sense they, they have that extra the extra funds to help the people in your country which is is, is, is amazing um <clears throat> what did we do with our oil because i i know for a fact that we got some of that oil because it looked like a big piece of you know a big area which is very close to scotland and the uk we must have um state claims to some of that oil because i'm sure it's in some of our water i wonder what we did with that and how why did we not hear about that oil hmm let me know in the comment section if you know anything about our oil and what happened to it <laughs> exports were because you guys did you guys made a lot of money off it and obviously your country is prospering but what happened to our country did uh, did they just pocket the money of that oil did private companies take it where where where's the oil? I want I want some oil. <laughs> where's UK's oil? We they must have made money off that oil and didn't tell anyone. Imports by 1975 mm. and Norway was able to pay off their national debt in the late 1990s, mm. a task which almost no first world nation accomplishes. Currently, it has wow. the second highest productivity value in all of Europe behind only Ireland. The state owns around 35% of all shares on the Oslo Stock Exchange, continuing its state-owned company strategy. Oil was able to transform the nation into one of the richest on earth. Norway wow. is like someone who wins the lottery and then invests the winnings to make them even more rich. Clever. It's no secret that Norway is... Norway invested it and didn't spend the money, they didn't spend that winnings, they just invested it in their nation and now they're prospering even more. We did something, we did something with that oil that we don't, like nobody knows about. I'm going to investigate after this video. I'm pretty sure that we found water in our ocean. Or oh, I see, sorry, or whatever you call it. <laughs> the water around the UK. I know we found a lot of oil and I don't know what we did with it. It is rich. The secret has to do with its geography, a geography that no other nation or region can emulate. Mm. Firstly, the rugged terrain and frigid climate of Norway has limited Norwegian development and kept their population low, allowing for any profits divided between the nation to be much greater than if it had a large population. Second, modern history that, that has made help. their region on earth to be one of the most peaceful, so Norway does not have to worry about any foreign power destabilizing the country. And no beef, just peace. <laughs> Thirdly, the discovery That's of the oil in the North Sea has allowed Norway to make some of the best welfare systems on earth, contributing to a massive spike in GDP, happiness, and HDI. Norway was for most of its history poor, but modern history and modern geography has made it rich. Norway yes, can serve good. as an example of what to do if your nation finds bountiful natural resources. Hope yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. I don't know what we did with it though. Hopefully Norway can stay rich far into the future. And we can only hope those godforsaken, meatball-loving, IKEA-dwelling Swedes don't ruin it for everybody. <laughs> Leave Sweden alone. 
I love all Nordic nations. Um, yes, so interesting. Norway, well done. You found loads of oil, you invested that oil, you invested in your people, your infrastructure, and now you're like one of the most, the happiest places in the world, and one of the richest places in the world. I need to visit Norway. I probably will become back bankrupt from a holiday in Norway. <laughs> I'm supposed to be visiting visiting you guys next year in Norway, so that, that will be amazing. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, I will see you soon.